Okay. Uh, in this next example, we're looking once again at another polynomial. Uh, this one happens to be a little bit more complicated, uh, but the idea is still the same. Uh, we want to find the absolute max and min on the interval, in this case minus 1 to 4. So step 1 is to find the derivative. Uh, this is a pretty easy derivative to find, so I'm going to go through that real quickly. Uh, derivative of x to the fourth over 4, we multiply by 4. 4's would cancel, we get x cubed. Uh, x cubed over 3, we'd multiply by 3. The 3's cancel, we'd get minus x squared. 3x squared, we multiply by the exponent 2, we get minus 6x. And of course, derivative of 10 is 0. So f prime is x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. Just like before, the process is okay. We now got to find our critical points. So we need to know when is the derivative 0, when is it undefined. So we'll start with 0. When is f prime 0? Well, that gives us this polynomial equation. Uh, fortunately, I'm able, to, it's a third degree one, but I'm able to pull out a common factor, which makes the problem much easier. x times x squared minus x minus 6. x times x squared minus x minus 6. And then you could go quadratic formula here if you want it, uh, but I'm just going to factor it. Uh, it factors pretty nicely. Things that multiply by negative 6 add to be negative 1, would be a positive 2, and a negative 3. And so solving each of those factors, uh, x is 0, or negative 2, or positive 3. Okay. Those are all our critical values for the function. All the places where the derivative is 0. Okay. We still have to consider undefined. We'll talk about that in a moment. But real quickly here, well, let me go ahead and do that, apparently. I already did it. So f prime undefined uh, doesn't happen. So those actually are all of our critical points. Thought I'd save that till later. Uh, one of the drawbacks sometimes to narrating the video and then commentating it later. Uh, so anyway, back to our problem here. Uh, x equals 0 to uh, negative 2 and 3. We are only interested in the ones that are in the interval. So negative 2 is not in the interval, negative 1 to 4. So therefore, it's not going to get used. We're only going to use the ones that are in the interval. So in this case, we're going to evaluate f now at our two endpoints, negative 1 and 4, and at the two critical values that are actually in the interval at 0 and at 3. So we plug in negative 1, and when we compute that, we get 7.583. 7.583. Plug in 0, uh, that's easy, we get 10. Uh, plug in positive 3, we get a negative 5.75 when you evaluate that, and plug in 4, and we get 4.67. So again, I'm going through this evaluating very quickly, but all I'm doing here is I'm going back not to the derivative, but to the function, plugging each of those numbers in. Now, whichever one of these happens to be the biggest number out of the four numbers here will be my maximum. Whichever happens to be my smallest number will be my minimum. So in this case, we see that f of 0 equals 10 is the biggest the function ever gets. f of 3 equals negative 5 and 3 quarters, 5.75. That is the smallest that my function ever gets uh, amongst these values. And so therefore, a uh, maximum at 10 and a minimum at negative 5.75. Okay, so those are our absolute max and min on this interval. Now, if you adjust the interval, you're going to adjust these values. If you go into the notes, I do this same problem. I do this same problem on the interval negative 4 to 4. That interval actually includes the negative 2. So you'll actually be evaluating that. Instead of negative 1, you'll be evaluating the negative 4. So you can see how that kind of you know, changes the problem. The integral makes a difference because that's going to decide which of these values are we going to count or not.